Okay, so the big question now is, um, is it still working um, in today's markets? Well, this is a FTSE 100 index, and um, I think we should just understand what we're looking at here, and the chance of it happening are pretty slim. This is the FTSE 100 index. It's made of the top 100 stocks um, in England. And when a stock's not doing very well, it is taken out the index, and when a stock's doing better, it's put into the index. Um, also, the weighting of the stocks in it is based on something called market capitalization. Um, I would say that market capitalization is a very random concept. Um, why do I say that? Well, if you took the market capitalization, uh, in, when we're looking up at this in 2000, um, of some of the big stocks like NTL, um, Marconi, and the list goes on, the valuations of those companies was actually absolutely massive. If you now value those same companies, um, they're pretty much worthless. So you can see that uh, market capitalization is a pretty random idea. So let's try GAN's 50% rule. Well, first of all, uh, there are some important lows that have actually been made on this. Now, I'm going to start in 1996. Basically, I've got to start somewhere. Um, and it's actually where the real bull market really started from. The bull market did really start from uh, this point here. Um, there was a crash in 1997, and um, the bottom was made here. And there was a crash in 1998, with its bottom being made here. So these are important points to add 50%. I've not taken 50% down from any highs, because it didn't fall 50% from any of these highs. So a bit pointless. So to try and find future highs, we would add 50% to these major points. So um, we're going to go to the first one, which is um, here. And uh, again, I don't know it's a major low when I'm doing it. I automatically just add 50% to any potential low. If it was to rise 50%, then that would be a point to look for a top, a, a point to sell the market or to short the market. So I'm going to add to this low 50% and let's see what happens. Well, the market reached 50% from this low down here um, in 1997. Um, and there was a severe crash, very, very quick. And like most of these crashes, they're given names after the event. And I think this one was called the Hong Kong crash. Um, but I actually did short it here. And the reason I shorted it was because it was 50%, for no other reason. The next major low was in uh, 1997, which was here. So I would just automatically add 50%. Now, I didn't say how it was going to get there, just if it got there. And you can see that the initial rise wasn't 50%. Well, I never said it was going to be. I'm saying if it gets there, that would be a point to look for major resistance. Um, it didn't work quite as well as the one back here, but it did actually stop the market at 50%. Uh, the important thing here um, is that you're expecting the market to turn. It would be a silly time to start buying the market, and um, it worked pretty damn well. The next major low was made in 1998. Um, so we're going to go down to that low, and we're going to add to that low 50%. Now, you can see that on the, we're actually, um, at this stage, this is the first day of the new year 2000. Everything looked absolutely wonderful, um, according to uh, the economists and uh, stockbrokers, etc. Uh, they're all telling you how the market was going to go up to 10,000. Um, by this stage, everyone had ignored um, the, um, the millennium bug. Uh, we had an, a fall down here, and then the market was going up. Now, everybody was bearish. Everybody thought the millennium bug was going to be one major, major problem. So why was the market going shooting up? Because the market usually does exactly the opposite to what most people expect it to do. And the ability to make money is to do the opposite to the majority, because the majority lose. So um, on the first day of the new year 2000, the FTSE 100 index had risen exactly 50%. Now I actually saw this over the uh, Christmas holidays, and I'd put that on and I thought, well, this is a point where I'd be looking to short the market. So I thought, well, I'll look at some of the other British indexes. And uh, another one of the British indexes that I follow is the um, Financial Times 30 index. Um, and this was what the Financial Times 30 index looked up to, looked at exactly the same time, um, the first day of the new year 2000. Um, it's a different looking graph. And in fact, this one had already made a high at the same level as it is on the first day of the year 2000, which is different to the other one. And the major low that we did the last 50% on the FTSE 100 was at this point here. So this is 30 stocks, which obviously should be completely different to 100 stocks. But we're going to add to that low 50%. And you can see that on the first day of the new year 2000, which is here, the market had risen 50%. Well, so it had also on the 100 share index. 
six months earlier, the market had also reached 50%. Hence why the market went down um, at this stage here on the 30 share index. So what are the chances of two indexes based on completely different numbers of stocks, both, both rising 50% at the same moment? Well, I would say it's pretty slim. Um, and we're going to look at what it did later um, after that. The other indices that I follow um, is the All Share Index. And the All Share Index looked like this. Um, again, um, it's a different looking chart. And the low that we've been adding 50% to was here. So I said, well, what's it done on this? Not expecting it to be um, the same number. But I added 50%. Well, this is the first day of the new year 2000 here. So on the first day of the new year 2000, the FTSE All Share Index had risen exactly 50%, the 30 Share Index had risen exactly 50%, and the 100 Share Index had risen exactly 50%. And Gann wrote about this rule back in the very early 1900s. What are the chances of that happening? Very slim, I believe. So let's actually see what happens next. Now, um, if we continue looking at the FTSE All Share Index, and we're going to bring this chart up to date, um, then it looks like this. And you can see it's the all-time high of the market, and since then the market has been falling like a stone. In this particular case, that was the first day of the new year 2000, where the first of the tops was made. It then made two pr uh, another tops afterwards to form like a triple top, and then we have the big crash. Uh, let's look at uh, the 30 share index and see what that one did. In fact, we'll look at the, um, the 100 share index next. The 100 share index, it happened to be the all-time high of the, uh, the market. After that it looks different, it didn't form that like triple top like the other one did, but again, it's the top of the market and the market falls like a stone. So let's look at the um, the 30 share index and see what that looks like. So there's the uh, 30 share index, and uh, the first day of the new year 2000 was actually here. Now this one didn't form those uh, like the triple top like um, the all share did, or the single top like the FTSE 100 index did, it made its major high on the first day of the new, new year 2000 and since then has fallen like a stone. Um, now of all the of the three indexes this is the only one that's actually fallen 50%. Um, so let's just see what it did when it fell 50%. So if we go to the high which was there and we take away 50% um, you can see that the market rose here at 50 percent. It went slightly through it but basically you'd be looking for resistance here. You'd be looking for the market to go up and that's the time of September the 11th. Um, now you might think that September the 11th had something to do with the stock market going down. It really is a complete load of rubbish. Um, it's got nothing to do with 50 percent but let's, most people don't actually look at the facts. They put two and two together and come up with 96. So what I'm going to do now is show you September the 11th and just show you that uh, the market was already falling like a stone anyway and really September 11th had really very little to do with the market. Now this is um, a daily chart of the FTSE 100 index and um, there's a, a, a misconception that the, um, uh, September 11th is why the market's collapsed and all the rest of it but it isn't really true. The market had been collapsing since 2000. Uh, September 11th was in 2001. Um, you can see quite clearly that the market has been falling like a stone. Yeah? Now, if you say to most people, where is September 11th? Um, they go and say probably somewhere like here. Yeah? Where the market had a very, very quick fall. But it isn't actually true. September 11th was actually round about there. And if you actually look what happens, the market went down that day, it went down a little bit more the next day, and then it went up for a week. So why did it go up for a week? We just had September 11th. And then the market went back down again. Now, I maintain that basically the market would have done that anyway. It would have had, it was already falling like a stone anyway. It had a little rally and went down. And in fact, it's only about a week later, maybe two weeks, uh, that the market goes screaming back up again um, after September 11th. Um, people fit in the facts. Uh, with the news, and that doesn't mean it's true, it just means that um, reporters have got to fill the newspapers or the television programme uh, to try and tell you why something's happened, and it's always after the event. They never tell you before the event. So don't always believe everything that uh, people tell you. At the time of writing, uh, of doing this, um, the big bull market is in gold. Um, and I want to show you basically the real reason why gold went up, and it really hasn't got anything to do with, um, at the moment, it's the uh, the potential Gulf War that's going to happen again. Um, so let's actually have a look at gold. 